Yep. It's run. What is it? Run. This is the audio slate for dive number 1925. UTC time is 22.35.11. Mark. Okay. Okay. So for those of you just turning Tuning in, uh, we are uh, making our descent on our second dive of King George Seamount, uh, this time coming up a ridge on the northern side. We will be descending to a depth of 2,500 meters and working our way back up the ridge of the Seamount, hoping to end at about 700 meters depth. This will be our shallowest dive uh, if we get up to the top as planned yes go ahead copy that thank you you ready for it copy captain done The sound? Bridge, bridge, yes. Bridge, this is enough.
So I had a question about uh, the speed of Hercules. Uh, we are descending at a rate of uh, 20 meters per minute, according to our dive plan. So it will be uh, just over two hours total. And then we'll be at the bottom. I mean, a question about uh, what's the coolest thing you've ever seen doing a dive? My new favorite is the sea dandelion. I'm obsessed with it. It's my spirit animal. It just, it was dancing. It looked happy and bright. It, uh, yeah, I think that that's one of the cooler things I've seen. That is a good one. Yeah, I don't even know what to what to pick out. <laughs> <laughs> There's been so much on this cruise. There has been. I do have a favorite rock. Please tell us about it. Uh, so it's one of in sample uh, 87. <laughs> no, actually, sample 65. 65. <laughs> yeah, is this uh? smaller anchoromitic basalt that we picked up with just these beautiful large uh, uh scenes and some uh, that are pretty fresh and altered olivines in them and it has this uh, uh, glass rind which tells us that it's part of a uh, pillow basalt it's a little quench margin on the outside of that thing and uh, uh, usually glass alters pretty quickly in seawater conditions um, these are older rocks but uh, yeah, I cut this one open when we brought that dive on board a while back and saw something that looked suspiciously like uh, preserved glass, which is very, very rare in older rocks like this, but we do we do occasionally find it. And uh, I've been putting off kind of subsampling that rock for a while because uh, I just wanted to think a lot about how exactly to uh, uh, do that kind of subsampling. And I did that this morning while cutting other rocks, and uh, uh, there are some additional slices now that show that there's actually a fair amount of, uh, yeah, um, what, you know, I, I can't, uh, I can't say it's anything else at this point. Uh, it just doesn't look like it could be anything else in the rock, but it looks like there's a lot of glass in that one. So cool. So, yeah, this is a. Uh, geochemically going to be a very interesting rock. So we're, uh, I, I'm consulting with the uh, uh, geologists on the onshore team uh, to see how exactly we should handle this uh, uh, once we get these uh, back to one or all of our labs. So yeah, kind of a rare specimen there. It's like, you know, you see something like this and you're like, can we go back there? But um, we won't be able to do that on this cruise because it's on the uh, the west, it was from uh, one of the western fork uh, seamounts and that's, uh, it would just be too much transit back and forth from where we are now uh, uh, to, to make that uh, feasible. Also, I'm very much enjoying Paul's um, modification to the ROV. What do we got? <laughs> We've yeah. got a all seeing eye. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the googly eyes. So stay tuned because he is going to uh, want to engage our audience with some physics questions and some other things related to this. Oh, cool. Yeah. So when he's on watch, be ready. 
And which, which watch is he on? Why is that so hard to say? Which watch is he on? Which watch? He is on t 8 to 12. Yep. Uh, yeah, 8 to 12 Honolulu time. So, um, yeah, yeah so stay tuned. Tonight, tonight for us. Yeah. In the meantime, you can just enjoy. I was, I'm having a hard time narrowing it down, but I think what's kind of the vivid image that's coming to my mind right now uh -huh. is that wall of basket stars that we saw. Um, um, on the Paragorgia? Or? I was, you know, I'm wasn't trying that to remember. A big I think it was, was it on our watch? Or was it a hemicralium? It, was it might on have been. A he it was probably a hemicralium, but yeah. I don't think the hemicralium with basket stars was our watch. Well, we saw a basket star wall on our oh, watch. Oh, that's possible. I, I'm trying to remember what, it, what they were on, but it almost, you couldn't tell the coral was there because they were fully covering it. I mean, as a it seemed cool. like close to a meter high and probably half a meter wide. It's definitely in our highlights somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's actually a highlight video of it up on Nautilus Live now. Yeah. And this is Justin, by the way. I guess if we're doing semi-introductions, too. Yeah. This is Christopher. Uh, my favorite so far uh, has been Chana Cops. Um, Chana Cops. Because uh, it's just amazing that something that looks like that evolved in a place like this. Uh, I mean, it's it's got little feet for crawling around on the rocks, and it's got the big mouth to, like, suck things in. And, uh, and it just sort of general color and, and shape. Most of the fish down here look pretty grumpy and, and mean, and hmm. Chonacops does like the little frown thing, but it's like an adorable frown. That's very cute. I missed it, but I'm gonna have to go back and look later in the photos. But last night's watch after us saw uh, Chonacops, but one of the flatter gray types. Mm. But oh, I haven't that's seen what it, that so was. I, I don't know which what it was. I hope we do a Chana Cops highlight, a, like uh, collage. There have been a lot. Can it just be like with audio, just saying Chana Cops over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys look at how cute this fish is? I oh hope my we gosh, see it's this all fish. Fins. I want that fish to be seen today. Those fins are so big. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be interesting toward the tail end of the dive when we're much shallower. Which I think we're going to get a decent bit of on our second, on our midnight watch. I hope so. I think so. I want to we'll, see what's on top. Yeah, I don't think our ascent will take too long. 700 Central. meters? Yeah. Yeah. And we're coming, are we coming up at noon tomorrow? By noon tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I guess by so. noon. We'll be a 24-hour so dive. Eight. So yeah, we'll see some somewhere in the middle, closer to the top. Yeah. Apparently yesterday they saw a scorpion fish and yeah, a bunch of, unfortunately, talking. a bunch of rope line. Right, I know. I saw I the, saw the, the rope. danger line markings. That was a lot of rope. Front row, any favorite animals that we've seen on this cruise? Front row, are you on SPL? Big no. <laughs> we were talking winch and winching speeds and gotcha. Do you want to be on SPL? I will. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Rhett. My favorite uh, animal. Hang on a moment. My favorite animal that I've seen on this cruise so far is uh, we've seen two Dumbo octopi. Which oh my are gosh, so good. Amazing little. Octopuses and one in with, both uh, ROVs. Big ears that they use to swim with. Yeah, I've not never seen one swimming like that. We watched it for a long time. It was really cute. Yeah, that was a great shot. It was. Hey, that's the really nice thing about having uh, uh, one of the many nice things about having a second ROV is you get that bird's eye view, and sometimes you pick up a lot of stuff that uh, Herc just never would yeah okay i found another one that i really want to see <laughs> oh that's a fishy rainbow look at that this reminds me of in is it shark tail of angeline jolie's fish character i you don't think i've seen about? that shark no. tail it's like a it was an animated movie from like 15 years ago or something you okay. gotta look up shark tail look okay. up shark tail it yeah does look, it sounds vaguely familiar 
There's this one fish that Angelina Jolie plays that looks like Angelina Jolie. I think Chris, <laughs> Rock is, Chris Rock is the other character. I think my other favorite so far has been the halosaurs, mostly because of their name. They're uh, a fish that looks a lot like a lizard, um, and I'm a big fan of animals named after other animals. So <laughs> halosaur means salt lizard, uh, and I think that that's perfectly descriptive of them. Oh, no, I've never seen this, but there were definitely a lot of big actors in that, weren't there? Is that a Pixar or DreamWorks movie or something? Yeah, one of those. Yeah. Oh my god, and also I'm so wrong, it was Will Smith. <laughs> and I am just doing the Oscars confusing. Chris Rock was Donkey in the in the Shrek movies. Yes, yeah. Chris Rock yeah. was, but he was so know. good in that. All right, so wow, we're already at 420 meters, according to Herc. And growing, we're aiming for 2,500 meters. And we're gonna go all the way up the volcano. And Just I'm re about. really excited about the bathymetry of this this particular dive because some sections are going to be a little bit more gradual, but the, especially the end is going to be look like practically going up a cliff. Yep. Yeah, we're going to have uh, some pretty steep portions. Uh, uh, yeah, Jess and I were chatting about it a little bit uh, around lunchtime, and she's really excited for those. It's probably going to be super cool. I hope we. I, I hope agree. we get to see some of it. We're probably going to see yeah. some really significant um, changes as we go up section two, like we did yesterday. Honestly, the whole thing is pretty steep. Like, look at that incline. It's it's pretty intense. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna about the first half of the dive, uh, lengthwise, is uh, looking like it's going to be pretty much straight uphill. And then um, after that, it flattens out a little bit. Um, we get what look like a couple of saddle points, and then uh, we start uh, moving up again. And then we turn the corner on top of the uh, geo structure that we're surveying. So these are these uh, uh, volcanoes that get quite large, and uh, they have a very distinct morphology um, where you have uh, uh, these ridges coming off and fairly steep sides on the volcano, but the top of it is uh, pretty flat. That's how we know, that's how we tell apart a geo from a uh, not geo volcano. Yep. The, uh, we're going to be covering six and a half kilometers over the course of this 24 hour dive and maintaining in general a fairly slow speed at 0 0.2 knots so that we have a little room to stop and look at things and collect if needed. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> All of these are so fascinating. Flat cheddar cobs. These are gnarly. They are. We're looking at the uh, anglerfish guide mm -hmm. under the... As, as we uh, make our descent, our temperature has gone down from about 22 degrees down to, we're now around nine degrees Celsius and falls at a pretty continuous rate. So at the bottom, we should expect somewhere around the two Celsius range. Uh, our oxygen saturation is also going down. What are we at right now, oxygen um, saturation? One. I got uh, it up over here. I guess I could pull that up on mine too. 50-ish percent. About yeah. 158 micromolar per liter yep. and dropping. So yesterday we were in some sections where it was 20 something micrometers. Yeah, uh, so low. We got to like 15, 14. Sorry. It was crazy. Someone in the chat says Eddie Murphy was the donkey, not Chris Rock. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we were both. <laughs> oh, wow. We're just wrong <laughs> on everything. Just strike it out. He did do a really good job, Eddie Murphy. I'm it's really not good. Enough. Yeah, discerning. So Val, we have a question. What kind of tools do you use to cut rocks? I use a, uh, basically a tile saw um, equipped with a uh, diamond tipped saw blade. And um, yeah, just this morning uh, we put a, uh, a shroud over the back of it um, that Beth has been using for some of her sample work, um, turned over to us and uh, uh, that's a uh, PVC and uh, sheet plastic construction that's helping us contain some of the mess that we're making on deck. And we're uh, looking at some further improvements to that to make it 
um, less messy because that is a high traffic. It's next to a high traffic area, so there's a fair amount of cleanup that we try to do each time we saw. But yeah, um, in instances where a sample might be too big to get completely through, oh, jellyfish. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, um, we we try to we, we try to cut up what we can, but sometimes the samples are a little bit on the larger side, and since this is a 10-inch saw, um, you know it is limited what we can actually cut up. So um, sometimes I'll start with a cut on a rock, and uh, then we have a uh, geology hammer and a chisel, also available in the lab, and I will use that to uh, break a piece of sample uh, off and use the cut as like a pre-existing weakness, so we have some control over how it breaks, so that we can get a uh, a good look at the uh, the inside, what's under the uh, manganese crusts. We also had a question about uh, what normally happens to volcanic glasses for that one sample to be unusual. I don't know how they preserve like that, but the whole the whole rock is extremely well preserved. It has a couple of fractures that uh, I've had that have seen some uh, secondary stuff kind of filling them and uh, partially re-cementing them together, but the interior of the rock otherwise is uh, just almost minimally altered from what I can tell in hand specimen. Um, so it kind of makes sense that uh, we would be seeing potentially intact um, Cretaceous glass in these because it could just well be a, a, a related to just how much seawater got in and it just may not have been able to get into some sectors of the glass rind like it normally does. Because um, glass, uh, um, I don't, uh, for those of you who've taken like a geology class or some sort of a material science class, um, you might be familiar with the idea that uh, uh, glass is a uh, chemically unstable structure. Everything in it is randomly oriented because it hasn't had the time to basically cool down, crystallize, basically kind of slowly freeze like the rest of the melt does. So we don't uh, get, you know, it just doesn't have the time to order itself. So that disordered state um, means that it's uh, less chemically stable and uh, you lose that um, over time you, and exposure to seawater, you do uh, kind of lose that original uh, glass and it'll oxidize. It sometimes uh, might recrystallize a little bit under the correct conditions, but generally it undergoes a process that we call uh, uh, de devitrification. Um, so it devitrifies, it gets pretty heavily altered compared to the rest of the rock and yeah, apparently in some of these better uh, preserved rocks, sometimes that just is not a process that is completed. So you just have little patches of stuff that um, comes up looking really fresh. It's very rare though. It kind of has to be exceptional rocks to, uh, to have that happen. Red, I have a question for you. Um, are the video and audio comms wired or wireless? and uh, what cams are used on the, the bridge or on the vessel? I believe they're wired. Um, we don't typically film on the bridge. I'm not sure if I have a camera there actually, um, but there are a number of cameras, uh, especially facing the port side of the vessel, um, which allow us to follow the uh, ROVs as they're put into the water. And then um, the ROVs themselves have a number of cameras on them for a mix of things between uh, gathering data through the primary camera of you know animals and other organisms that we might see, uh, along with uh, some that are more specifically geared towards allowing the pilots to uh, see what they need to in order to check the gauges and statuses and to run the manipulator. Um, in addition to that, we've got a few that are kind of just for show inside the van so people can watch us uh, in kind of a mission control style uh, clips and um, a few that are uh, mostly used by the pilots again to uh, check on the winch and make sure that everything is running smoothly in that room and with that uh, vital piece of equipment. Thanks. Somebody wrote in that their favorite uh, thing they've seen is the sandworm with the gold feather-like scales. We saw one of those on our last last watch. Hopefully we'll find another one of those. Oh yeah, that would be cool. I think uh, Chris Kelly was pretty interested in those too. Yeah. I 
hey, hi. Hello. What makes a sponge a sponge? Good question. Silica spicules as an internal skeleton. <gasps> Does it have yeah. a skeleton? Well, you call <laughs> you call the the spicules, the glass, that part, like uh, or yeah, that is technically a skeleton, internal skeleton. There's a lot of different kinds of sponges, though. Like some, uh, it's more like the spicules are just little pieces, kind of like uh, the I, fiberglass in I agree. insulation. But yeah. I'm glad she used the exact some are word. Some separated. <laughs> So sponges have skeletons, but they are not vertebrates. Well, we you know call lots of invertebrate body parts skeletons. Like for uh, a crab, for example, it has an exoskeleton. So the hard parts on the outside you'd call a skeleton, but it's not. It's not a. What defines a vertebrate is like is the back cord, the 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 Spine. spinal cord. So is sponge so like a. Lots of things can be vertebrates, lots of things can be invertebrates, mm -hmm. and sponges, invertebrate, fine, fine, fine. Um, what else, what other categories does sponge fall into? Uh, what other categories? Like large, large grouping of things. Um, like I think it's it's its own It's its own phylum, phylum, phylum own periphera. But the, the members of the phylum are only organized on the cellular level, whereas uh, our corals and jellyfish and things are organized on the tissue level, and most of our more advanced organisms are on the organ level. So sponges technically have no tissues and no organs, even though that actually that's that's debatable. But um, especially with these like stocked sponges, there's clearly some uh, kind of organization. You know, yeah. some organization there. But I mean, if you take a sponge and cut it in half, you get two sponges. Like they <gasps> they are resilient they will just grow back there have been experiments where they took a sponge and put it through a screen and made little sponge spaghettis and each little sponge spaghetti just grew into a new sponge yeah they have those really unique uh what are they the amoebocytes amoebocyte cells yeah. uh cells may i regurgitate what you just said was it there's one more thing that defines the sponges oh boy it's what is their, it? the coanocytes those collar cells yeah. those are the flagellated cells that line their interior cavities they're kind of different organizations of sponges but they all have those cells that help um pump water through their internal cavities and take in food from the water what's that called again a collar cell a collar cell. cell every sponge has a collar cell and it helps There's pump water to the other cells yeah it's one of the three or four types of cells that sponges have so sponges are organized by cells, and corals are organized by tissue, yep. and humans and other things are organized by organ? You got it. There are, like, different levels of organization, but sponges lack tissue. all of those levels, pretty much. Whereas, you know, like humans have, we have organelles packaged within our cells. Yeah. We also are organized at the cell level. Then we're organized at the organ level, our cells, or cells and then tissues. The tissues are organized into organs. So they're kind of like, there's like a hierarchy, but sponges don't have any of that. And the other invertebrates all have varying levels of those. What is a tunicate? A tunicate is? is a Ooh. chordate, which is actually very close to, uh, so the vertebrates are within the chordates. So it's in the same phylum as all vertebrate animals. And actually when a tunicate is in its larval stage or, uh, yeah, and it's, it, you can, and sometimes vertebrate. juvenile stage, you can see it has a notochord, which is like the early signs or vestiges of a, of a vertebrate, um, of a, of a spine. It's kind of like a tadpole yeah. with the like spine going down the tail, but then they stick to a rock and their whole body plan changes. It has a pharyngeal uh, section that sort of resembles our, um, our uh, pharynx. I'm overwhelmed. I got some answers I wasn't expecting just now. <laughs> oh some my God. Have a, they make a kidney stone, basically, and they have um, internal, like little microscopic organisms that break down their kidney stone as fast as they make it. And so they've actually been doing some 
medical school research on that process to like see if there's a way to address kidney stones in humans in a new way. I didn't realize that you could uh, divide a sponge and have multiple grow from that. That's pretty cool. Which? Yeah, the budding. Yeah, like the sponges that I usually see uh, up near the surface in the uh, intertidal zone are like crusting sponges. So they just it's, they're kind of like the the green blob that we saw. <laughs> they whatever they're on, they just take that shape. So just to take a step back, um, we started this whole uh